We will hear from Sidney Bacon. Sid, an archaeologist from the USDA Forest Service in Lolo National Forest. She holds a bachelor's in art and anthropology with an emphasis on archaeology and a master of art in forensic anthropology from the University of Montana. She is a board member of Montana Archaeological Society and president of the Board of Friends in the, at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. And today, Sydney will present on the Grange Hall lookouts, all the while sharing their histories and rehabilitation stories of the Big Hole Peak and Skokum Butte lookouts. Two of only four known locations that still exist today. So pretty priceless indeed. These buildings have created more stories than we can count. And if you haven't visited them yet, today I think she will help you plan your itinerary for doing so. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sydney Bacon. I hope you can hear me all right. Um, I'm an archaeologist on the Lolo National Forest. I've been working there since 2001. And my passion is historic preservation. And um, so I'm going to talk to you today about two different L5 or Grange Hall lookouts that are on the Lolo National Forest. As far as we know, there are only three standing left in existence. The, the, there was an error on the um, your document. But anyway, um, there's only three and, and two of them are on our forest. And um, we've been able to fix them up and it's pretty cool. So... Um, my buddy Kyle Stetler is not able to be here with me today. Uh, he and I kind of co-teamed this preservation or this presentation. We've already we talked um, earlier this summer at the Forest Fire Lookout Association annual meeting in St. Regis, Montana. So um, I'm going to talk to you today about Grange Hall lookouts. Um, so we have lots of collaborators and partners that helped us with these two restoration projects. I've got their little icons here down on the side. We have the Lolo National Forest. We have Passport and Time, which I hope some of you are aware of. We've got the Region 1 Historic Preservation Team, which is really unique to our, the, for our Forest Service region. We have a crew of people that teach us how to fix these buildings. And then, of course, the, fire, the Forest Fire Lookout Association. So let's see if I can't mess this up. Okay, so I'm going to first talk to you about Big Hole Peak. Um, Big Hole Peak it, Lookout is on the Plains Thompson Falls Ranger District of our forest. It's outside of Plains and Thompson Falls. It's in between them in a town, or I mean an old cutoff called Weeksville. But anyway, um, both of these lookouts were built in 1928 or so. We also don't know the exact dates of these lookouts. Um, but we do know that they predate the real popular L4 style of lookout, which I'm sure you've all seen. Um, they're called L5, which doesn't really make sense because if they predate the L4, wouldn't that be L3? But whatever, you know, you know the government. Um, so yeah, Big Hole Peak looks like this. Um, both lookouts, um, the, the, what sets them apart from the L4 style is these are five courses of logs on a gable roof or like a uh, with a gable roof and i have no idea how the logs got up there in the 20s because we had trouble in the 2000s getting them up there um so yeah again i kind of i went over this already we had um so region one of the forest service we are very lucky to have a special little pot of money that comes off of the top of annual funding nationwide called Heritage Stewardship Enhancement. And folks like me and other archeologists across the region are able to write proposals to get funding to do these kinds of projects. Not just historic preservation work, but maybe field work, oral history interviews, all of our fancy, um, what, what uh, some of us would call nice to do work that we sometimes can't do because of our NEPA obligations. So um, we had help from um, serious every all of the every project every year um, HSE funding paid for these uh, paid for a significant amount of it. Um, we also had help from the preservation okay. team, uh, passport and time volunteers. If you don't know what passport and time is, it is um, an entity based out of New Mexico that helps coordinate volunteers with Forest Service and now BLM to also complete their nice to do work like historic preservation. We've got lots of pit volunteers on the Lolo that keep coming back every year. And it's kind of normal. They're 
they have their own little groups of people that are, you know, they're veterans and, you know, they kind of get their own little sense of ownership with these projects. Uh, we also had assistant from, assistance from the Plains um, chapter of Backcountry Horsemen, uh, Sealy Lake Ranger District, Packstring, and the Plains um, Ranger District rec staff and Missoula Hell Attack, who brought us the logs and the wood stove. Um, okay, so I kind of already said this already, but Skuka or Big Hole was built in about 1928. It's this L5 style lookout. Um, the thing that really made Big Hole <laughs> kind of a big pain was that all of the logs are coped, which means that they were scooped out on the underneath part to fit on the one below it. And that kind of set us back like two weeks. We we didn't know that they were coped. And because we're doing all this work by hand with um, primitive and historic tools, it really kind of put a damper in the project. Um, again, yeah, as far as we know, there's only three left in the Forest Service region. One of them is on the Nez Clear in Idaho, and then the other two are on the Lolo. <laughs> So again, as far as we know, uh, Big Hole was last staffed in 1972. Um, with the advent of aerial firefighting, it kind of lookouts around that time and, and earlier and later just became a dying thing. It, it became a common practice to just like have, have the fire folks just torch the buildings out of, out of um, to pr protect against liability and vandalism and kids going up there and getting hurt. Um, in 2011, so let's see if I get this right. I hope I don't mess anything. Oh, yeah. There's Kirby Matthew. He was our historic preservation team leader up until a few years ago when he retired. And he went up there in 2011. And the first step in the process of restoring a Forest Service administrative building is to get this guy or their predecessor, their successors up there to kind of conduct an assessment. What's all needed? Is this really going to be um, a feasible project? Can we do it? Mm -hmm. Is it safe for people to, for just volunteers to be up there? Because as you may imagine, it's all lead paint. I mean, it's all washed away now, but it, there was lead paint on the interior. So we had to deal with things like that. So where do we start? Well, Kirby's inspecting the sideways outhouse there. Um, we got, I think, uh, the YCC, huh? Oh, yeah. the, youth, the Youth Conservation Corps kids actually helped stabilize that. Um, you can see here, we've got the uh, Region 1 pack string de delivering not only our food, tents, sleeping bags, et cetera, but also any kind of um, construction materials that could be packed on a horse up onto the lookout. Uh, we got the Mission Valley Hell Attack here delivering things up to Big Hole Peak. And it's not called Big Hole Peak for no reason. Um, you probably, you might be able to see it in a, in a further picture, but it's just a full on drop off right there. Okay, so 2013 is our first phase. That's when I was involved with the project. This was the only year I was involved with Big Hole. Uh, and you can see here that we're working on the log replacement. And funny enough, you have to start from the top and then this one, and then this one, and then that one, which doesn't quite make sense. And I can't answer that for you, but I could get you an answer at some other point. Um, and here are some of us, there's me and our volunteers kind of hanging out with the logs that we've pulled out of the structure of the building to kind of assess and figure out what we need to do to fix them. Um, and yeah, here's our fancy little pit banner, letting the world know that there's volunteers up here. This year we did the roof. You can see folks up on the roof. So the first year was really the assessing what logs need to be replaced and then the roof uh, shingling and stuff. And again, remind um, reminding you that on the other side of the lookout that you can't see is the drop off. And that's where they put me. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, clean up. Uh, there was 
something along the lines of 200 pounds of, of hantavirus situation going on up here. And again, it kind of looked like that, but up there. And guess who they put up there to do that? Um, so luckily I was, I did have the, the proper uh, PPE on. But yeah, basically just taking the crud out of there, assessing can this be fixed? And then you can see we definitely put a new stove in there. <clears throat> okay, moving on to, two. okay, here we go. You can see the big hole there. Uh, moving on to 2014, uh, the forest had recently reorganized. So I'm only now on the one side of the forest. So my counterpart was working on this. But this gal here, she was the last remaining lookout in 1972. Um, her name is Molly. And she apparently played the piano up there. Someone hauled their <laughs> piano up there. They didn't do it for her this time. But anyway, uh, so this year really kind of focused. We, we brought all the windows down on pack on the pack string. Over the winter, they were refurbished, retaining as much of the original material as you can um, in our Region 1 preservation shop, which is one of my favorite places ever. Uh, let's see, am I missing anything? We had one of our fire prevention tech gals, um, sorry, oh, I guess I only had one page there. Uh, one of our fire prevention tech ladies is also a videographer. So she was compiling an oral history interview with Molly and, and the other uh, volunteers and workers on site. She kind of compiled it over the course of a few years. Um, okay, so in 2015, more log replacement. So you can see right here, or maybe you can't, but um, these logs are the original logs. When we're trying to do log replacement, we just don't take out the whole log and then put a slap a new one in. If there's a retainable quality of any of this log here, we're going to save it. And guess what? That takes more time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we did a lot of what we call splicing or Dutchmaning of these logs. So we, we got out the rotten stuff and then... Um, spliced it together with, and I mean, just trying to, the, to um, jive up the diameter and the dimensions of the log is a real challenge. Um, okay, more of 2015, uh, painting, painting, lots of painting, <laughs> and more painting. Um, again, we had Libby here. She's our videographer, and they're, I don't know who that person is, sorry. Um, it, that she's videoing someone, and then that's our for our former forest supervisor up there, and then we've got um, our folks, some volunteers, as well as that's Kathy Bickenhauser, who is our current preservation team leader. There's our former forest supervisor, and then this is Erica, my counterpart, who um, was leading the project by this time. Oh, that's the ranger. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Plains Thompson Falls Ranger. Um, okay, 2006 comes along. Everything's kind of coming, shaping up. We're working on the interior of the floor there. Uh, we're working on putting oakum and then tar on the outside. Well, oakum on the inside of the logs and then tar on the outside. And then we cover the whole thing with paint so no one has to see that. Um, yeah, there's that. And then 2016, the Copper King fire just thwarts everything. Um, volunteers had just hiked up there. The way I understand it, it was it started on a Sunday afternoon. So the pack string had gotten up there. The tents had gotten up there. Um, everyone was getting ready to start work the next day. And then they were all evacuated. Um, so the helicopter, I believe, tried to get out. Well, it, it brought in uh, materials so the firefighters could... Um, cover the building with structure protection. And um, so that kind of, like I said, put a pretty big damper in things. Yeah, the fire started at 425 on Sunday and then everyone just had to walk right back down the hill. It's about a three and a half mile hike up to Big Hole Peak. It's not, it's super mellow. Well, Byron, would you say the same thing? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a gentle hike. It's along a ridge. Um, so anyway, it was just kind of unfortunate that everyone was kicked out right when they got there. Um, okay, so phase 4.1, uh, they, were, they were intending to be done by 
the previous year, but because of the fire, they had to kind of extend it by another year. And you can see the before and the after. Um, the preservation team over the winter, again, um, had plans for the lookout furniture, or they made plans for the lookout furniture based on what was there existing, like the Allidade um, stand and things like that. And then the floor was completed. Um, they put new, you might have remembered from some older photos, there's, um, there was a sign here that said Big Hole Peak with the elevation. Well, they made some new sign posts for it. Um, they got the shutters all erected and then they did a ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> okay, and I mean, wildly enough, Big Hole Peak Lookout in some kind of rapid movement became um, came on the cabin rental program. I think it was in the by the fall of 21, which if any of you are government employees, that's like fast forward speed. Like it, it doesn't make any sense, but it was it's a, my family and I hiked up there that that uh, fall. And it was just I mean, if, again, if any of you stayed have stayed in the cabin rental, they're very cool and rustic, but they're a little kind of you know, run down. This one was just brand new. It was so cool. Everything was brand new. Um, and it was just, it's just gorgeous. I mean, the views you can imagine. Um, okay. So big hole, I think we're going to move on to Skookum now. So this is Skookum Butte Lookout. Again, the same style of lookout as big hole. This is on the Missoula Ranger District, just outside of Missoula, up Highway 12 on Elk Meadows Road. Um, it, it straddles the Montana-Idaho border. So if you're on this side of the building, it's Montana time. And then if you're over here, it's Idaho time. So it's super confusing. I just wore a regular watch. Because um, I was supposed to tell people to drink water and have sunscreen and all that. Um, Skookum is a little different than Big Hole, the location in that you can kind of tell by this photo, it sits on, if you ever have been outside of Lolo and up Highway 12, you know they have those crazy Idaho batholith, Idaho batholith formations of rock. So it's this pancake lava or pillow lava or what people call it. But then it's just, it just sits on top of it. And, and the workspace is like a third of the size of this room, including the lookout. So, and it's unsure footing. It's, it's, pretty gnarly, especially if you're supposed to be managing a bunch of volunteers who are long retired. Um, so here's, here's Skookum Butte in 2012. Kyle was the guy who got me all jacked up about this project. Um, it doesn't lean over as much as the 2011 photo does. But anyway, you can see there's, there's no flat area up here. And um, it kind of just goes down. And I'm like, how did they get these trees up here? I wish I knew. Um, you can see the deterioration of these logs. Um, it was basically this that on all four sides. This, um, again, this uh, Skookum Butte was constructed in 28-ish. It predates the L4. It's the logs with the drop siding and the gable roof. Um, and then, uh, it's, uh, let's see, I already said all that. Typically lookouts were, were placed within five air miles of the next one. And there is another lookout kind of in the background over here called uh, West Fork Butte lookout. And there's number nine wire. It just goes all over the place. And I just, that's another thing that I would love to learn more about. Like, I can't believe that those guys, after the winter came, they had to just go and restring all that wire to the next places. It's, I mean, job creation, I tell you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, kind of the same deal, the same group of collaborators, um, Backcountry Horsemen, Packstring, Passport in Time, FFLA, HSE, yada, yada that kind of thing. So here, it, here we are in 2019. We had a pretty small group just because it's like, dude, there's only like space for like three people up here. And um, too many cooks also sometimes gets to be a problem. Um, not you, Byron, but like <laughs> these cooks. <laughs> um, anyway, so here we do, here we have the pack stream packing up our, uh, I believe that's probably siding for the side of the building. Um, but Skookum Butte 
so there, I'm sure a lot of you have heard the name Skookum. Um, it, it's the way I understand it. It's a, a, a term that means like, do you understand that? Can you can you get that? I'm not too Skookum in physics or I'm not too or I'm totally Skookum with Skookum you. Um, but this, this lookout was named after a guy, um, from the community named Bill Woodman. And this is his picture right here. Really sweet guy. Um, he was kind of a loner, a rebel, and he, uh, kind of just would go off on his own and then come back and help the community when he could. And, um, I'm trying to find some more information about Skookum. There's a school, there's a community up Highway 12 called Woodman, and there's a one room school or two room schoolhouse uh, that's called Woodman School. And I've, I've, I'm trying to get with the school to see if we can find any more information about the family or who in the world built this lookout. <laughs> um, we do have plans. So the, the preservation team was able to secure um, plans for this L5 style lookout, which is usually is pretty interesting because we usually don't get the Forest Service didn't really get their plans until the 30s. And this predates that. So pretty special. I think I'm kind of partial. Um, OK, kind of the same thing. We don't know who the last lookout was. Um, we have no information on it. But we do, I mean, I can, you can see the condition of the um, shingles, the shutters. Uh, some of the windows are broken out. Um, we went up there in 2013, I guess. This is Jack Poppin, who is part of the pre preservation team. And um, basically, we, he conducted a building assessment to figure out, okay, what can, we, what can we salvage on this building and what can't we? Again, we had helicopter support because horses or humans cannot carry those logs up there. Um, unfortunately, you can kind of see this, this, this condition of how the logs were put up there. They were literally like that. And like, again, got a lot of retirees up here. I'm just freaking out because I don't want someone to hurt themselves. Um, but we were the first couple of days were just trying to figure out how are we going to do this? Um, but at least we got the pack string to help us with bringing stuff up. We got our volunteers and um, other things bringing stuff down. We set up a really, really <laughs> what I would call ghetto workstation right here. Um, but it, it was like the only flat area up there. And this is uh, Jack doing some log work here. We were really excited, though, because these logs weren't coked. <laughs> so we didn't have to deal with that. Um, okay, still in 2019 here, you can see we're doing the logs, putting them in um, from the top down. Uh, we have to use band clamps and all kinds of things to keep them in place up here so we can work on lower logs. These guys are trying to secure the corners because if you saw from the picture, the lookout was kind of slanty. Um, phase two, COVID edition. So in 2020, we had lots of big dreams of having another Passport in Time project, lots of people, and then that all got shut down. But us employees were able to go up there and work. This is Kathy Bickenhauser. She's the preservation team lead. This is Matt Sanford, who's also on the preservation team. And that's Matt and Jack up on the roof with fall protection. So that year, we focused on doing the roof, figuring out the problems with the floor, and doing the siding. We just didn't really have the manpower for the logs. Uh, lots of media attention. Um, this is, uh, yeah, someone from the Zulian um, taking some pictures. And we got the windows back up there. Um, this is a cool thing. So we took down all the hardware from the shutters. And I have some connections at a place called Missoula Technology. Nick Missoula Technology and Development Center, which is a forest service entity that I say is like Hughes Lab and James Bond movies. Mm -hmm. They invent and test things that go out to the forest so you can all use them. Mm -hmm. So we ha I had my friend fabricate any missing shutter hardware. He sandblasted them all, he cleaned them all, and then he made new ones. He welded new ones for us. So we have a complete set. It's pretty cool. 
Um, all right, we're back in 21. We have a couple volunteers, but we're still being careful. So these are our seasonals that are working on the shutter construction. So we put the shutters together on site based on a plan that Jack had uh, put together. So we're painting, again, painting, lots of painting, painting. And then Sid gets to go and stand like this in her suit, de the ceiling of the lookout. And yeah, it's not a fun position kind of being like this all day. Um, yeah, more painting. You can see the deterioration of these logs here. Now this one was okay. We were able to save that one. And I don't know if I have a good example. Well, it's the same side. Okay. So these two here were replaced with these two. You can see that. Now this, Oh my God, uh, the block and tackle of death. So uh, we, we we kind of, you know, measure twice, cut once kind of thing. Um, we realized we needed some more logs. Thank you. And so they were deposited only like, you know, 80 feet from the lookout, but it was downhill on rocks. And so in the morning, Jack's like, okay, yeah, it's just going to take us a half an hour to do this, there's three of us. We don't even have four people. So we don't, we can't even like have two people on each, you know, one person on each side of the log. It was brutal. Um, I probably, there's so many things I'd rather be doing than, than this, but we finally got, we had to like use these logs as a, sh I guess it's a shiv or whatever to like a, a runner to get that log up and it's all granite. So it's really sticky and sharp. And anyway, we got them up. Okay, Pitt is back, 2022. Um, this is our good friend, Mark, who comes down from up from Texas. He He's the window guy. His whole deal was just shaping the windows so they could go back into place. And of course we used, uh, we labeled them just so we knew where all of them went back. Um, log worth work on the north wall. The north wall was definitely one that had taken, of course, the most weather was pretty beaten, but you can see we're doing that splicing technique up on that top one. And I think on this one too. Um, yeah, okay. And uh, this is kind of the end of it. Um, the interior floor was sanded and finished. We painted and of course, dignitaries from the next door office came over <laughs> to visit us. Um, this is our regional archeologist, Jory Clark. And this is our regional um, recreation guy who I was really stoked that he came because I wanted to talk to him about cabin rental opportunities. Um, the, someone yesterday, I think it was Kate mentioned in the workshop, like it's kind of hard to get money together. Well, for the Forest Service, it's not really that hard to get money together to do these kinds of projects. What's hard is the future use. It's like, what are we going to do with this in the future? Can we get everyone's buy on? That's really difficult. And so what I'm hoping is that we can get this because we did, we were such so successful with Big Hole. And I mean, especially since COVID, everyone and their dog, well, you're not supposed to bring dogs. Everyone in their family it wants to go on in, in a lookout or stay in a cabin rental somewhere. And um, they're booked. If, if you've ever tried to book them there, it's ridiculous. It's, it's not even funny. Like you cannot get them. And so I'm really working um, at a glacial rate <laughs> with our next door, with the regional office to try to get Skookum on the cabin rental program. Another thing that we hope will help with getting it on the cabin rental is, um, lack of, van or I mean, reduced vandalism. We get, um, I, we haven't had any vandalism knock on wood at Skookum proper, but we've have had problems in the past with, you know, the first day I went there in 2013, there was a snowmobile bumper right up at the front door. <laughs> and even though it doesn't quite look like it, you can in the winter get a snowmobile right up to the front door. Um, and I think, yep, that was it. So um, thank you for your time.